Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this week we've got a lot to talk about as far as iOS 17. There's more news about supported devices, as well as some new apps that may be available. We have more news about the Apple AR VR headset and much more. This is your news update for the week of April 24th, 2023. Now, Apple has had tap to pay to be able to receive payments with your iPhone in the United States for a little while now. They've officially launched it in Taiwan now as well. And you can see the press release here. I'll link this in the description, but it's available for different retailers if they want to use their iPhone without buying a separate terminal to take payments. So that's available. Now, if you use Apple Fitness Plus, there's some new challenges this week for the International Dance Day. That's on the 29th, and to earn the dance award, you'll need to complete a dance workout that's 20 minutes or more on the 29th. There's also new workouts here with Pure Dance. You'll see Get Into the Groove with Dance. There's 12 episodes and more. So lots of different updates as far as workouts and more when it comes to the International Dance Day. Now, if you're a student at Purdue University, you can now use your Apple Wallet as your digital ID. That's an option, and if you want to access this and you're at that university, go into your wallet, and then within the Wallet app, you'll be able to use your ID. Similar to what we have with driver licenses or state IDs in a few different states, these are not available everywhere yet, but that's up to the state to implement that. Now, Rivian, who makes electric trucks, I actually have one, is working on an Apple Watch as a key as well as implementing Apple Music like Tesla has. Now, this is a bit of a pain since they won't implement CarPlay, but you will be able to use your watch as a key, probably using Bluetooth and more. They recently talked about this in a software update where they actually had the head of software engineering in a video taking questions in an interview. So that was really nice to see them actually work towards maybe improving their software. Maybe one day they'll implement CarPlay, but I don't think so. Tesla and Rivian don't currently do that. A couple weeks ago, I mentioned that there was an auction for an iPhone with a Lucky U sticker on it. It actually went for $40,320 and it turns out that Marquez Brownlee or MKBHD on YouTube actually purchased it and then unboxed it on YouTube. So if you want to see what an original iPhone looks like when you unbox it, you'll be able to watch it here. And I don't think we'll see this again, someone buying such an expensive device that's sealed and then actually taking a look at what it was like to originally unbox it. So it's a great video. Be sure to check it out if you've never seen an iPhone unbox, the original iPhone, as they used to include a lot more docks and more with their iPhones or iPods. And it was great when I unboxed that first iPhone as well. Lots included and you felt like you got a lot for your money back back then, even though it was much less expensive than what we currently pay. Now that the Apple new home architecture is available in the home app, if you've upgraded your devices, there's now support for matter accessories. So there's full matter support. And now Google has announced last week that Nest thermostats released in 2020 and later will be home kit compatible very soon. So they'll be able to use home kit and you can use them in this app. Finally, instead of having to use Apple or Google's own app, you can use Apple's app instead. Now, Apple continues to increase overall market share and has increased from 18 to 21 percent, according to data by Canalis. However, Samsung has taken back the number one spot with 22 percent market share. So this keeps going back and forth. Apple continues to grow. So does Samsung and they go back and forth. But that's still a huge amount, considering that more people use Android than iPhone. So iPhone has a big market share, especially in the United States but it looks like they're growing and going back and forth for number one. There seems to be increasing concern about people being able to access your phone, maybe taking it from your hands while you're using it in a public place, whether that's a subway, you're sitting on a park bench, someone grabs your phone, runs off with it before you have a chance to lock it. They can then go into your settings, go into your iCloud settings and just reset your ID overall. Then you lose access to all of your photos and more. Now I showed how to actually secure this in a separate video using a screen time password, but that's not the perfect solution. It's just sort of a workaround for now to slow them down. Apple has finally actually responded to this and said that they're looking into ways to better protect the user. So I would like to see the option for them to actually prompt you, uh, verify with you, maybe over the phone, whether or not it's you trying to reset the phone. That's something that I think would be great have more security, even more so than two factor, maybe three factor security, where it really locks down your account and makes it difficult for anyone to change that. That way you get to keep your photos and everything else that you have on your phone with contacts and more. So hopefully we'll see this remedied in the future with different updates. But at this point, Apple's still looking into it.
Now, WhatsApp keeps having new updates, and one of them is quite good that I thought I'd share, and it has to do with a new feature called Keep in Chat. Keep in Chat will allow for disappearing messages to be kept within a conversation if the sender approves it. Now, they actually introduced this, it's not available yet, but we'll be rolling out within the next few weeks. Also, WhatsApp and Signal and others have written a letter to government in the UK expressing concerns about their surveillance bill, which would actually force a way around the end-to-end -end encryption, and that would allow them to implement scanning features similar to CSAM and others. This could allow for further dangers to the users if there was ability to monitor messages or just have a sort of a backdoor into those particular apps. So hopefully the UK reconsiders and this gets shut down. Either way, if that happens in the UK, you may see WhatsApp leave. Leave. We're not really sure what will happen there, but I don't think we'll see apps put in backdoors to end-to-end -end encrypted things because it makes them less secure. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, I did want to mention deals this week as there's a couple nice ones. Of course, AirPods Pro 2 always seem to be on discount from Apple, sold on Amazon. They're selling them directly, but there's also still that deal I mentioned last week with Beats Studio Buds. They're $99, and there's also a deal on 14-inch MacBook Pros. So this is the MacBook Air, but there's a great deal on that. I'll link all of the deals this week in the description below, so be sure to check those out if you're interested. Now, iOS 16.5 beta 3 is expected this week, as soon as tomorrow. So if we go into the calendar, I don't have it on my main screen there, go into the calendar, we should have it tomorrow or Wednesday. Definitely this week, I would expect beta 3. It could be the RC, but it's probably going to be beta 3. And then we'll have hopefully some new features. It's been pretty sparse at this point, but we should see that. We should also see a final release probably within May, maybe mid-May. Some people have said June, but Apple's working on iOS 16.6, so I wouldn't really expect that since they have another version, and we're going to see iOS 17 beta 1 typically on the 5th if Apple continues to release it the day they show it off. So that seems to make the most sense. We'll have to wait and see what they actually release, but I would expect at least iOS 16.5 beta 3 as soon as tomorrow. Now, as far as iOS 17, there's been some news about iPad support iPad OS 17 is still rumored to lose support for some devices. This time, according to iPhone soft, who was accurate last time, iPad fifth generation, iPad Pro first generation 9.7 and 12.9 would lose support. If that's the case, maybe iPhone 10 would lose support, but I don't expect that. I do expect full support from iPhone 8, 10s that we have here, 10s Max, all the way up to the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. It doesn't seem to be something that they're going to lose support for this year, although we'll have to wait and see what Apple does. Now, Mark Gurman has mentioned a few things coming to iOS 17, and one of those has to do with improvements to Apple Wallet. So what that means, maybe it's just overall design improvements. We don't know. He wasn't specific, but said to expect improvements to Wallet as well as the Find My app. Find My has been pretty good in general, but could use some updating, especially for things like AirTags, where they no longer show the actual battery level. They just tell you whether or not you need to replace them. So hopefully we see some really good updates this year. Maybe there's going to be a slight redesign in the overall interface. That could be the design but he's just said to expect some updates there. Also, I've talked about how iOS 17 should have the ability to sideload apps, according to Mark Gurman. That would mean for third-party app stores or just sideload apps, similar to what you can do on a Mac, but this time around, he says to expect it to be in Europe only to comply with those local laws. This seems like a very Apple move, and if they have to comply in the EU, maybe not in the US, they'll just keep that as an EU only feature. So we'll have to wait and see if they do that. Hopefully if they open it up in Europe, they open it up here, and then we can just install apps from Safari or some other browser like we can on a Mac. It would mean you don't have to do it, but you'd have the option to. Also, according to a recent article by the Wall Street Journal, Apple is planning to release its own journaling app similar to day one on iPhone. So not just notes, but its own separate journaling app. The code name of the app is Jurassic, according to the article. So I'm not sure why they would do this, but Apple tends to take good ideas and then do what they call Sherlock them since they took that particular idea and implemented Spotlight many years ago. So that's something that they could do with iOS 17, and it looks like we could have a new app there. Now, as far as iPhone 15 standard models, this time around, it's said that they're going to have frosted glass on the back like we have with the current Pro models. So with the iPhone 14 that we have here, we have this glossy finish on the back that's sort of just 
glass with color behind it. Instead, it would be more of a frosted look like we have on the pro models as well. I would definitely welcome that. And maybe we'll just have frosted glass on all of them. I would also like to see maybe anodized sides that are matte on the pro models as well. These glossy sides tend to pick up a lot of fingerprints. It would be great to have sort of the anodized matte finish as well. Now iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max are expected to get a Periscope zoom camera this year. That would take the place or add on to the zoom camera we have now, but at this point they're saying it will only go up to five or six times optical zoom. This is much lower than initially expected or compared to what we get with Samsung up to 10 times optical zoom. So we'll have to see what the quality is just because it's five to six times doesn't mean it's not as good as the competitors but it is expected to be lower than the others. Apple's been working on iPhone 15 for many years, and they typically work on them about three years ahead of time to get ready. Originally, every iPhone 15 apparently had a lightning port early on, according to Unknowns21 on Twitter. They've been a reliable leaker, and this isn't really surprising as the EU had not passed the law mandating USB-C three years ago. So it seems that USB-C is definitely something we're going to get, but early on versions had lightning, which makes sense as far as prototypes. Now, when it comes to the AR and VR headset, a reliable leaker said he is familiar with someone who's recently tried the upcoming headset and was blown away. This is sort of the first positive news, as many have been skeptical if the headset will be revolutionary or offer anything other than maybe an Oculus does. So it's great to hear some positive news about it. And according to Bloomberg, Apple is focusing on fitness, games, communication, and with FaceTime in sports. So it will kind of have a lot of things in this, according to Mark Gurman, when they first launch it. Similar to what we had with Apple Watch, let's throw everything at it and see what sticks and see what works best. Also, according to Mark Gurman, the headset will feature an external battery pack. This is similar to the MagSafe battery pack that Apple currently already offers and will provide only about two hours of battery life. So we'll see a lot of different people making battery packs, I'm sure, but it's said to have a proprietary connector. And of course it would. Apple will make it proprietary, want you to buy the battery pack from them. However, it should just be USB-C and allow you to use other battery packs as well. Additionally, there will be a USB-C data port on the headset as well, according to Mark Gurman. So maybe you'll be able to charge it there also. We'll have to wait and see what they actually do. Now, Nicolas Alvarez on Twitter and confirmed by Aaron P613 found new desktop Macs added in code from this past week. Now, this could be the upcoming refresh of the Mac Studio or could be something completely different. Either way, it looks like we're finally going to get some new desktop Mac updates. Also, the upcoming MacBook Air 15-inch will offer just two variants of chipsets, according to Ming-Chi Kuo. We'll have the M2 chipsets, maybe with different core counts, but either way, there will only be M2, not M2 Pro or M2 Max. And that's probably due to the thermals, the thinness of the MacBook Air. It makes sense, and the clientele for the people that are buying MacBook Air probably don't care about the Pro level anyway. So we'll, we should have more than enough power for most people. I can edit 4K video on here, no problem, with the regular MacBook Air, so I don't expect any different on the MacBook Air 15-inch. He also said that Apple's next chips, the M3, are months away, but will start production this year. Whether or not they're ready for different Macs later this year or for early next year, we don't know, but it seems like they're in production very soon. Now, we've been waiting a long time for the Mac Pro refresh with Apple Silicon, and it seems we could wait even longer, according to Mark Gurman, who says he does not believe Apple will show this off at WWDC in June or release it then. He does expect it this year, but doesn't think it will be at WWDC, which to me is a bit disappointing. We've been waiting for that. Apple's passed their two-year mark that they said it would take to push all of the different Macs to Apple Silicon, but so far we're not seeing anything. Also some exciting news if you're into the displays from Apple. According to Omdia, Apple is eventually going to switch almost all of its displays to OLED. However, this will take until 2027. And one note is that the iMac or external displays could have 32 and even 42 inch variants. So we could have huge Apple displays or something different that we're not expecting. Either way, the Pro Display XDR at 32 inches is one of my favorite displays ever, if not my favorite display ever. I just wish it had 120 hertz options. 
other than that, it's pretty perfect in my opinion. But either way, that is a ton of news this past week. Lots to go over, lots of things to expect, iOS 17 and more in just about a month or so. So at this point, I'm looking forward to that a month and a couple of weeks at this point, and we should have betas. Let me know what you're looking most forward to in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already, though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.